Hello and welcome here on Random Rotation. I hope you're all doing well. Today it's finally time to play around a bit more with photogrammetry. If you want to follow along, you need to install two tools, Meshroom and 3D Flows Sephir, as those are the two programs that I want to compare in this video. Just click on the links in the video description, install the tools and you're good. To go. In my last video about Meshroom, some people suggested that I should use Sephir for better results instead. And that, guess what, made me curious. Of course! Alright, first we need something cool to scan. That theoretically could be anything. But keep in mind that super reflective surfaces won't work very well. And overall you'll get much better results in well-lit environments. This time, I've chosen to scan a simple wall right outside of my office space. And before we start, I think it's also worth mentioning that this time I'll be using my phone instead of a fancy camera. I just want to know how that turns out. And I do not have the latest and greatest smartphone on the market. It's 2020 and I'm using my iPhone 8 Plus that I got late 2017 for this test. Should work fine. Let's find out. Okay, and now we need to capture the surface of this wall here as good as we can. And once that's done, it's time to boot up the computer. Let me start with Meshroom. Like in my last video about Meshroom, I just have to drag and drop the photos into my images window over here. And then I save my project and start the process. All in all, it took Meshroom roughly 19 minutes and 30 seconds to finish. And this is what Meshroom created. But before I take a closer look at it, let us throw the same pictures into Sephir. At the moment, I'm everything but an expert when it comes to Sephir, which is why I won't show you all the steps necessary. But if you like, I can make a separate video about that later, of course. But at first glance, it's not more complicated than Meshroom. All in all, it took Sephir 7 minutes and 22 seconds. File size does matter, we all know that, so let's take a look at that now. In this test project, Sephir clearly wins with 70 megabytes and therefore 40 megabytes less than the Meshroom file. And now it's finally time to see the results side by side. I imported both files into Blender and just scaled up the Meshroom one to make them comparable. And in all honesty, I couldn't tell which one's which. But the one on the left is the Meshroom wall and on the right side we have Sephir. Comparing the two walls, Sephir generated a much cleaner mesh and the count of vertices clearly shows that too. Let me zoom in closer now to show you the amount of detail captured. I gotta say, I'm super impressed by the details both tools were able to capture. Of course, these are not ready to use meshes, but that's 100% the photographer's fault, I would say. Mm. But hey, I, I'm still learning this whole scanning thing. So don't judge me. Let's wrap this up. In my honest opinion, both tools are pretty cool. Sephir, on the one hand, has some nice features that Mashroom has not, such like the system monitoring during the process, but the free version is limited to 50 photos, which is not much once you try to 
reconstruct larger objects. If you want to upgrade to the next best version, you need to spend 149 euros plus taxes. You can then realize projects with up to 500 images and you unlock dual NVIDIA GPU support. Not bad. Meshroom, on the other hand, is a free and open source tool, which makes it a super viable option for a lot of us. In my test, it was slower, yes, but the mesh itself looks pretty decent and therefore Meshroom got the job done. At least the parts that could be recognized and processed by the software. And like I said, the results are far from being perfect. There is a lot room for improvement. But no matter which piece of software you choose, I think you can get impressive looking results. And that's what counts, isn't it? My learning for this week is that I still need and want to dive deeper into this whole photogrammetry game. And there is a ton to learn. Reality capture, for example. Just another piece of software that I need to check out. Uh, fine, that's it for this week. I hope you liked it, felt a bit entertained and maybe you even learned a thing or two. Have fun trying this for yourself. If you like that, I see you in the next video. Stay safe. Bye.